Hi everyone, Niklas Seidloff here. As some of you might have heard, IBM acquired a company called Worklight at the beginning of this year. The company Worklight has a product also called Worklight, which is a mobile platform to build, deploy and manage HTML-based mobile apps, hybrid apps and native applications. In this video, I'm not going to give a general introduction to Worklight. There's really good documentation on worklight.com and there's also a YouTube channel um, with lots of good videos um, about Worklight. What I want to do in this video is to demonstrate what I had to do in order to use XPages in combination with Worklight. The challenge with the currently publicly available Worklight version is that it doesn't allow developers to point to remote web applications. Um, instead, you have to copy your HTML file and all JavaScript, CSS and other web resources into the hybrid application. Um, so I spent some time to um, build a prototype that shows how you can change Worklight to point against a remote web application, in my case an X page, um, and still be able to use Worklight APIs, uh, JavaScript APIs, and also um, to leverage the phone gap capabilities that come as part of Worklight. Um, so here's what I had to do in order to make that run. And again, this is not a supported configuration. The Worklight team is looking into that, into extending and improving that. Um, but as of now, it's not supported. I just want to um, you know, show you or give you some information for how to get it running, um, at least in some simple cases, so that you can start to learn Worklight and the Worklight benefits. So um, here's what I had to do. First of all, I downloaded here the um, evaluation version of um, Worklight. And um, in order to install the Worklight um, server, um, first of all, I had to install a MySQL database and then the actual Worklight server that runs on Tomcat. So here's how it looks like. This is my MySQL database and here is my um, Worklight server. Now, once you have done that, um, um, you can open the um, console, the admin UI, um, on your port 8080. So, um, in my configuration here, I have the Worklight server running on port 8080 and my Domino server on port 80. So, going back to the install instructions, um, so that's how to set up the um, Worklight server. And then, um, I also had to set up the um, IDE. Um, which is based on Eclipse. So first of all, I installed an Eclipse IDE. Then I um, installed the Worklight SDK into that Eclipse IDE. And since I'm using Android here um, for my development, I also installed the Android SDK into that same Eclipse IDE. Um, so then what I want to show you now is, um, again, how to use an X page. Um, that um, runs obviously remotely and I in that X page I want to be able to do two things. Um, so this is the, the end result of that application. Um, I want to do two things. One is I want to invoke um, Worklight APIs, like there's for example a JavaScript API that um, returns whether or not I'm connected to the Worklight server. And I also want to be able to call PhoneGap APIs. In this case, I don't use any of the um, predefined PhoneGap um, JavaScript APIs, but instead I use uh, so-called technique um, PhoneGap plugins um, to call via JavaScript down to my native Java Android code and return something. Um, so this is essentially the, the sample that I want to, to show you how to get running. And uh, I used another example here as a starting point. So when you go back to um, the website worklight.com, um, you can go under get started. Um, you can go to get started and in here are a lot of training modules, um, including the source code. So what I, uh, the one that I took here is uh, module 9.3. And it, um, it is a simple sample showing you how to implement a PhoneGap plugin. And here's the source code. And when you click on here, you get a little presentation that, for example, describes what a PhoneGap plugin is. 
So here's now the Eclipse IDE. I already imported the sample from the worklet.com website and essentially um, one project can have one or multiple apps. In this case there's one app in it and the way these apps are structured is um, essentially always two parts. Um, one part that includes all common code that runs on different platforms and then you can define so-called environments um, that override and add um, platform specific code. Um, so in this case I have only one um, environment called Android and I have common code. Um, so when I open this, um, this is the um, an essential uh, file here, the, the entry point, the one and only HTML file. So this is what you see here. Um, it imports a couple of um, resources and then it essentially says um, worklight client init. And here is where you can put your um, HTML code. And this simple sample um, it essentially only has a button um, and when you click it a JavaScript um, function greet me is invoked. So um, in order to take a look what this um, function does, I open here the JavaScript file and in this case it only says um, alert please use an Android device. Now for all the code that is common, or in other words all the um, web-based code, I can run it um, directly here using the um, Worklet console. So this is my application and I can now say okay run it um, as common resource and then um, I can run it here in uh, Firefox, use also Firebug etc to, um, to debug it etc and when I click it I get the, um, the alert that you just saw. So this is a simple case for um, a very simple web-based application but what I want to do now is, um, where is, it? is to actually extend that functionality and do something special for Android. So the um, the second um, or this, this other environment um, has already been created and in here I have the same JavaScript file or the file with the same name but in this case um, I have a different implementation of the greetme method and this implementation um, essentially calls this um, phone gap plugin that allows me to trigger to invoke um, my own Android native code, my own Java code um, via JavaScript. Um, so essentially I call here um, a method to say hello, um, I pass in um, callbacks um, when, um, for successful and, and failure and I pass in some parameter, in this case just a string. Um, so and what this um, JavaScript API actually invokes is what you then find here in the second project in your Eclipse IDE which is the Android specific version of it. And in here I have now my Java code um, that um, you know invokes or um, executes some Java code um, and in this case it just checks whether the action is say hello which it is and then it just responds um, what I pass in here as an argument. That's all. So very simple implementation but you can imagine that in this um, source code here you can um, use all other Android APIs that you want for example access to the camera, access to uh, local contacts etc. So far I haven't changed the um, sample from the website at all but now I want to actually um, use an X page. So in order to make that work I had to do a couple of things. So let's close these first. Um, well um, the first thing I uh, changed was here in the um, Java class Android PhoneGap plugin. Um, I ch changed the URL that is loaded um, and pointed it to my um, Domino server running locally here and then my NSF and my X page. Um, there is however a second place where I had to change that and that's another Java class. It's called um, worklight or WL config.java and in here I defined again a link to my Domino server. Now the reason why that is necessary um, is because um, the worklight client tries to access the worklight server from the web application, from the HTML. Um, is, is, and the same HTML code also tries to access other resources from the Domino server. And um, 
that means that both the worklight server on port 8080 and the domino server on port 80 have to be accessed and that is by default not possible because of one domain um, policy restrictions. So what I had to do here is to use a proxy um, where I always go um, through the domino server first even if the worklight client tries to access the um, worklight server. Um, so and as you can see here this is uh, my domino server and this is here now a path pointing to my proxy and then I basically forward to localhost which is my worklight server on port 8080. Um, so in order to um, make this work um, I had to um, where is it right here there is a directory um, under the data directory and then properties and there's a file called proxyconfig.properties uh, just this one here and here is where I defined um, my um, my proxy that points to the um, local host uh, to the worklight server on port 8080 now I did it in this file directly so that it also works for anonymous users uh, my understanding is, I might be wrong though, is that if you use policies, policy documents and Domino Administrator to define these, um, it only works for authenticated users. So that's why I had to do it manually here in this file. So um, after I've uh, done that, um, I could try this. So this is the, uh, the, um, the console um, running on port 8080 and now um, just in order to test the proxy, I tried to use or tried to open here the same console, and as you can see, it works um, when I use here the um, the proxy UL. Um, so that was the first set of changes that I had to do. Um, and then also, um, let me go back into the IDE right here. Um, so then, when you point to the um, to the X page. Um, the X page also needs to be able to, to import or access these other um, resources like JavaScript files and CSS files. And in order to, uh, to make that work, what I had to do here was to go um, again under the, in the Android project um, and then there's a folder assets www default and all the files under this default directory are files that I had to import into my NSF. So here, for example, are JavaScript files, there are CSS files, etc. And these five directories I had to, uh, six directories, I had to import into my NSF. So, um, so here is my Domino designer now, and this is my sample database, WL NSF. And in here, um, I imported these um, folders from my Android project. To make them available for my X page, and um, and then what I could do is I could essentially um, take the um, the HTML file again from my Android project um, and copy that HTML file into an X page. Now I, I didn't copy it one to one, but I used some X pages um, coding conventions here. For example, here my resources. Um, but this is now my, my X page. It's basically a copy of the HTML file in my Android project. And in here, um, a couple of different CSS files are invoked. Um, some configuration is done. Um, and some JavaScript files are imported. And here's my actual um, HTML code. In this case, my two buttons. One with the label is connected, the other one called phone gap. And these are the, the functions I'm going to um, talk about in a second a little bit more. But before I do that, um, there's one more thing um, that I had to change to make this work. And that is I had to um, do a change here in wlclient.js. Um, there's a function in there called handle direct update. Worklight has the ability to check for updates to the web resources of a hybrid application. And if they are available, um, it, Worklight can, can invoke the update directly. Now in my case I didn't want to do that because again I don't want to copy the file or the web resources locally but I always and only want to use the remote version. So what I had to do um, in order to disable this direct update was to comment this whole function out 
and then I just created another function with the same name that really doesn't do anything other than to finish this init flow and that's that's it. So and then finally with all these changes I could um, could actually call my um, uh, at my X page here running in a hybrid worklight application and let me show you and um, that it actually works. So this is again the um, Eclipse IDE and what I want to show you now is here the log so I um, clean all of this and then I launch the simulator and I um, open the application again and while it's loading here you should see some um, debug statements showing up here in a second and my application is up and running and you can actually see that it tried or that it accessed the worklight server um, for example, here is one of the responses, um, and again, it's using my proxy here. Um, it called some URL app services API, etc., and it got returned a success. Um, so that's just to prove that my XPage application can actually um, invoke now the worklight um, uh, worklight APIs that um, use the worklight server. Um, so and this is this is also basically all that this button does. Um, it calls a worklight API is connected. So when I press on here, it tells me is connected. Let's take a look at that source code. Um, so I go here in my X page. This is the button is connected. It invokes um, JavaScript function is connected to worklight, and this is um, only this function here. Um, I do an alert is connected, and this is the worklight API. Um, is connected. So that's the first example and then the second one is basically the same version that I um, talked about earlier. Um, I call here, um, I use a PhoneGap plugin to call into my um, Android specific Java code and it just returns um, a label, in this case XPages developers, back to the JavaScript. So again let's take a look at that code. Um, that code is here in my um, JavaScript file um, imported into my Domino database and here is my um, uh, greet me function and I call here the um, PhoneGap plugin and I call it with a parameter X pages developers which is um, you know exactly what is returned um, from my um, Java code that I showed earlier Right here. Okay, so that's that's it. That's a very simple sample showing how to use Worklight um, to point against a remote XPage application, and it proves that you can invoke the Worklight JavaScript APIs um, from the XPage as well as the PhoneGap APIs. Thanks a lot for your attention.